Hi, I'm Andy Wood, Education Director for Audubon, North Carolina, and I'm in front of a colony of leased terns here on a beach in southeastern North Carolina. Leased terns are our smallest tern. They're a fish-eating bird. Make, they make their living uh, plunge diving out in the water to catch small fishes that for their food. They look similar to a gull, but uh, terns are diving birds. They dive straight into the water to catch fish, whereas a gull might hover over the water and pluck food off of the surface. The tern's bill is very sharp and pointed, and the least tern, you can tell them from other terns in the area because one, they're very small, but also look at their bill. The bill is going to be yellow with a black tip. Other terns in the area generally have a reddish orange bill with a black tip, or solid reddish orange. The least terns come to North Carolina, usually in late March and early April, looking for suitable places to nest. And their favorite place to nest is out on a bare, exposed, sandy beach. Most people associate bird nesting with trees and shrubs or maybe a cavity in an old tree. But least terns, they have to nest only on bare, exposed sand. And the way they do this is they'll pick out a spot like this one here and shuffle their body in the sand just to create a little bit of a depression and then in that depression the female will lay an egg usually one a day um, up to two eggs per nesting season the eggs take about three weeks to incubate and then about three weeks to go from hatching to flying so it's about a six week period for the least turn to get from egg to a flying bird and when birds are flying they're full grown so when you see a small hawk that's not a baby hawk, that's an adult, or that's a full-grown hawk or a full-grown tern. If it's flying, that's full-grown. Um, one of the things that, that people may not be aware of uh, here in, in the coast of North Carolina is that birds like the tern, the black skimmer, American oyster catcher, even some of our shorebirds, the only place they can nest is on these exposed, bare, sandy beach areas. They can't go off into the grassy dunes. That's not where they want to be. So when you're traveling to the beach, if you come to the coast and you see a posted area that has a signpost with a sign on it saying posted area, a nesting area for birds, uh, it'll usually be strung with a rope or a string. We're asking people to stay out of that area. And when you're near that area, the birds are likely going to be pretty upset. They, they recognize us as a predator. So you may actually have terns flying over your head, squawking at you, maybe even dropping half-digested fish on your head. They're really upset at your presence because they think you're a predator. So we ask people to stay out of the, the posted areas. If you've got a dog, please keep the dog on a leash. Keep it away from the posted area. If you've got a kite, kites look like a bird of prey to one of these animals. So that can be upsetting. All we're asking is that you give these posted areas, these nesting areas, a wide berth. Just let, leave the birds to their own. Enjoy them. You can walk around the perimeter, uh, look at the birds with binoculars, take pictures of them. Just don't cross the line and the birds will be very content. Least terns uh, in, in North Carolina are doing double duty now because of the threat with oil in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, their cousins down in the Gulf states are imperiled by that oil. This nesting area has taken on increased importance. And so it's really imperative that when you come to the coast, share the beach with these birds because these offspring are going to be what carries the next generation to the following breeding season, we hope, in 2011. For Audubon, North Carolina, I'm Andy Wood.